Kuzamula na Ganchi Ajapasanale. I'm very happy to be here and uh, I've been a part of Bliss uh, since its inception. I really like the logo because I made it. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so uh, I'm not a marketing specialist or I'm not a, a specialist in digital marketing, but I think you will be able to relate to me because whatever I had to learn about digital marketing because I needed it. It, all, uh, it started with Radio Valley, but what really, where I really needed to use digital marketing was when my wife was uh, pregnant with our first child in uh, 2015, she had a small travel business and her small travel business was me, like I said, like uh, I was introduced, I was more or less like an artist just living my life, you know, having my beer, smoking my cigarette, jamming up. When my wife was pregnant and that was uh, when I felt that I now need to take care of our business because it fed us. Uh, and uh, so I took over the business and uh, that's where I, I started studying about digital marketing. Travel business was something that, you know, it was already saturated and uh, somebody who just came into the business had, had no room actually for, for uh, to begin with. But the fact that there was the internet and I saw a lot of space not being used or advantage that not, has not been taken advantage of, the fact that it's on the internet, anybody can be your, your you, can get in, you can get connected to your, to your potential uh, customers. So what I did was I used uh, digital marketing and uh, to my advantage. In 2015, my wife had four guests in the whole year. By 2019, without any agents in between, I increased it to 500 guests. Without no agents in between. All, it was all the guests talking with us. And uh, what I did, the first thing I did was, I changed the name of our business. I, I don't even remember her travel agency name right now. It was some drug pima, something, something was a mouthful. The first thing I did was I changed the name. I made it very simple. I said, breathe Bhutan. It was something that people could remember. It was something that even the guests, when they go back, they could actually recommend us to somebody else. So when you name a business, I think you need to be careful about approaching a Lam or a Rinpoche to name your business because it really doesn't work that way. The best to, way to go about it is select a few names and give it to them and say, which one do you think is the best? Let's start off with the basics of salesmanship or the basics of marketing. People don't buy products, they buy stories. People don't buy what you sell, they buy why you sell, because we are, we are humans, we, are, we have sentiments, we are, we are emotional. Do you think this product would sell without a narrative? I think this is one of the most uh, sold souvenir in our country. If this didn't have a narrative, I would be kicked out from this uh, event right now. Without the narrative of the divine madman and without the narrative of Tupakinle, this is useless, but it sells. That's why when you sell something, sell it through a story. People don't buy features, they buy solutions. Pain points connect us with our audience. We all have pains, you know. Somebody wants to become rich, so he'll always be looking forward to a product that make, makes him rich. Somebody has skin problem, they want a solution for that. When iPod was launched, Steve Jobs did not say that iPod, you know, this uh, has features such as the battery lasts for one day or you know it has a shuffle feature he sold it very simple and because the problem back then was you cannot or you could not carry a thousand songs in your pocket and that was the solution and that's what made it sell the third one 
People respond to fear more than they do towards gain. People respond to fear. It's an innate nature as animals to respond to fear. And that's how insurance businesses are doing so well. And that's why when somebody or when something is being promoted, limited time, it's like you, you don't want to miss out. We fear that. So people respond to fear more than they do towards gain. So when you're selling something, if you can, try to use that to your advantage. Now there are five, there are many types of digital uh, marketing, but I will stick with five. For content marketing, which is basically podcasts, blogs, videos. For instance, uh, Bliss would be a content-oriented uh, program or a brand. Mobile marketing, which is very straightforward, you basically push MMS, which is uh, multimedia messages or SMS, to the, your potential target. Of course, you need to collect a lot of data and all that so that you can segregate what your target is and what your target is not. Then we have email marketing. This again is very straightforward. You push emails to your potential customers. We have social media marketing. Now this is very broad. And then we have search engine optimization, which is basically when somebody searches for something, you want your website to pop up. You want your website to be ranked higher. I do not want to get into the technicalities of this because that is not my area of expertise, neither would you be interested in it. I would want to talk about what worked for me. So what works? I have 15 years of advertising, marketing, and branding experience. And in these 15 years, I have listed 10 areas where I've learned myself and I've found areas or things that work and things that don't work. We have brand. We have the uh, unique selling proposition. We have the uh, we have social media engagement, uh, content, then niche market, Google business page, WhatsApp business, search engine optimization, and influencer marketing. I've listed this ten because this is something that each and every one of us can take advantage of. Brand. A brand does not end with just the logo. A brand has a lot more about it. I do not want to get into the details of it, but when you name a business, do not, do not make it more than five, stick to four syllables maximum. Don't make it more than five syllables, which is like, for instance, <coughs> bliss is one syllable. Uh, if you talk about more, Joe Park is three syllables. People will abbreviate it and they've been doing it. For instance, Bank of Bhutan, it's a mouthful, so what they will do is they'll abbreviate it. Bank of Bhutan, B-O-B, B-N-B-L. All banks are all like abbreviations, except for Tashi Bank. So when you name a business, be mindful, if, you, if your name exceeds more than five syllables, people will abbreviate it and thereby you will have to, you know, the brand will get diluted. Is it Bank of Bhutan or is it BOB? Which one do you want to brand? The other thing about brand is when you start a business, if you can brand it, nothing like it because if the customer believes in your brand, the customer will be your customer for a lifetime. Unique selling uh, proposition. USP, so as they are called. When people come to, uh, to me and they say, you know, I want to advertise on, the, on Radio Valley or can you help me market my product, I always ask them, what is your USP? If your product, if you cannot differentiate your product from somebody else's, it's not going to work. You have to be able to differentiate your product from somebody else's product. And that is the unique selling point. It could be a matter of price, it could be a matter of quality, or it could be a matter of usability or user-friendly, but it has to be different. For instance, what's the unique selling point for Radio Valley? There's so many radio stations. Now, this is something that we've been thinking about it for a very long time, and what we are doing now is we are rebranding Radio Valley, and what we are doing is 
music. Everybody has access to it through their phone. Spotify, YouTube, all over the place. But what people don't have access to when they're driving in their car is content. And that's why content is uh, one of the main ingredients of marketing. So Radio Valley, the way we are making ourselves unique is by providing content that people can enjoy when they're driving, such as interviews and discussions and even reading out uh, articles where we've already, by the way, uh, Radio Valley, we have uh, a personality that reads, uh, it's, the program is called uh, Mandala Digest. We have a personality that reads out uh, business, business articles. I named her Kille Crawford. She is an AI, by the way. She just reads the text. The audio is so human-like, everybody thinks that she's a real person. Social media. Now, social media is very big. Uh, all of us are actually, we're always trying to sell something. All of us, each and every one of us, we are selling something. If not a product, we're trying to sell ourselves. If not ourselves, we are trying to be heard. So we, we're all trying to sell something. And social media is very big. We're all using it. And people are advertising on it. People are selling on it. But how can you best take advantage of it? I want to talk about that. Nothing like it to use video content. Video content is what gets more engagement than anything else. And you also have to be able to identify the target, where your target audience or where your target uh, market lies. Because we have Instagram, we have Facebook, we have TikTok, we have YouTube, we have Twitter. Which platform do you want to use? The best way to go about it is go go on every platform look because load your content there you, you don't lose out anything but identify your target market and use that platform so if i was to talk about travel facebook is not the platform that i will use to get more guests i'm going to share my secret pinterest because that is where people actually go to to seek travel inspiration. Travelers use Pinterest to seek travel insp inspiration. Instagram as well to a certain extent. And nothing like it on YouTube. Because before you go visit a place, even us, we actually go to YouTube and see what we can do in that place. Now that's social media marketing. If you want to make a post, especially on, uh, say, Facebook and Instagram, how do you make it go viral? How do you take advantage of the, the algorithm? Timing matters. What time you post it matters. Other than that, it's, it's, it's actually engagement. The more people comment on it, the more Facebook and Instagram and all that is going to show to more people. And that's how things go viral. So if you want to take advantage of this, make sure you respond to every comment and make sure that if your friends, you have to request them. When I make a post, just comment something. It could be anything. And respond to it. And you're actually cheating the algorithm. Content is king. It will always be king. Right now we're talking about... Uh, Social media like Facebook and all that in the future is going to be uh, the metaverse and uh, augmented reality and all that. Still then content is always going to be king. Now for instance, how can you use content to take advantage and to market yourself? I think Bliss is a part of Bhutan Ecological Society and Bliss is an avenue through which Bhutan Ecological Society can be heard can be known, can be found. Sibjam, how am I going to use content marketing to promote Sibjam, which is an e-commerce platform for farm products, local farm products. Uh, what, what we've decided, we have to have a strategy. The strategy, one of the strategy that we decided is we are going to go talk to popular people, personalities, celebrities, and ask them, what is your favorite fruit? What is your favorite vegetable? And after them, what is your favorite food? What are the, its ingredients? We make a video like that, we post on Facebook, who's not going to watch it? But we will always stick to food. 
because it's a celebrity in the first place and secondly because the celebrity is actually talking about food who doesn't eat food who doesn't love food the content will be related or will be associated with sibjam as a brand that indulges in food and eventually self sufficiency for bhutan niche market always is always better to hit a niche market for instance if there was a tour operator who was totally focused on tourist or guest from the lgbt community the first thing they will do is they will actually search on google you know bhutan for lgbt or bhutan for gay the first thing that google, uh, google is going to show up is is going to be that brand or that uh, website niche market is so easy to uh, to market to so easy to advertise your market will be small but it will be so easy to connect to your market google business page is something that people don't use it quite often i get a lot of travel inquiries because of my google business page which is uh, breathe bhutan and if you look at ajapasa 30 to 35000 people on a monthly basis people check out my google uh, business page and google business page is not being utilized use it to your advantage you you want to get into e-commerce you want to sell something do you know that uh, whatsapp has a uh, a business whatsapp as well which actually you can create a shop there a marketplace there you can manage your orders and you know you can copy the link you can advertise it you can share it on facebook you can do everything you so you don't actually need to create a e-commerce platform you can do that on facebook as well you can do, do that on instagram as well but the advantage of google uh, uh whatsapp business is it's so easy to manage the orders then uh you have the uh, search engine optimization or seo i will not talk about the technicalities of you know optimizing the image optimizing the keyword optimizing the content but what you can do is as a business if you identify your target and what your target needs post content blog it of what people need how would sibjam do it sibjam will for right now for instance if somebody wants to make bhutanese food recipe there's no content on google hardly sibjam can take advantage of the search engine optimization by posting bhutanese food recipes so thereby again sibjam gets uh, noticed so the other way to do it is if you do blog don't forget to update it because google will not the, the the algorithm google algorithm will not even though you have 500 blogs on your website if you do not update your blogs google will think that because you're not updating google will not give importance to your website so even if it's a old blog updated with new information for instance breathe bhutan the moment the new uh, tourism policy set in the first thing i did was i updated all the pages all the post and google will give more importance to that website that updates its uh, content on a regular basis and finally influencer market it was because of this influencer that i could grow from four guests in 2015 to 500 guests in 2019 the bucket list family very big they are like celebrities all i did a lot of people ask me how did you manage to get uh, you know uh, bring them to bhutan all i did was i asked them you know a lot of pe- a lot of us we 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 don't ask you have to ask because maybe that other person wants to help i know a lot of young entrepreneurs who want to come to talk to me and want to collaborate but they you know in zongkha we have something called seni i i also want to i don't have the time to go to them but if they come to me i want want to be a part of their life part part of their story so like uh, steve jobs also said that 
the difference between a successful people and somebody who will not be successful is somebody who, who will ask for help and for what they want will probably do well in life. And he also gave an example of uh, he, when he was in school, he called up uh, one of the CEOs, I think it was, uh, I forgot the name of the company, but and asked the CEO, I am doing a school project and I would like to some parts from your, it was a, it was a electronics company, some parts from your company so that I can execute my school project. The CEO was shocked that this school kid was, is asking me about these little things. The CEO agreed that you know, he will give the spare part and the next semester, the CEO actually hired him as an intern. So ask, I asked them, they came to Bhutan and after that everything, there's something called cumulative advantage which happened to me, uh, me and Breathe Bhutan because of the bucket list family because they're very big. They're very big on Instagram, they're very big on YouTube. So now when people, influencers, when they want to come to Bhutan, they actually go through the videos and Instagram and they, they see that we hosted them. And now every influencer is asking us that they want to work with us. So cumulative advantage is just because I hosted them and they're very big, now everybody is coming to me. The example of cumulative advantage would be in the Amazon rainforest, you know, some of the trees are giants. Why? Because in the Amazon rainforest, you know, trees are actually fighting for sunlight because it's so thick. The moment some one tree gets one inch extra sunlight, they become a giant tree. And that's exactly what happened with uh, uh, the Buckley's family. Just because I hosted them and they're very big, now everybody wants to come to Bhutan through Breathe Bhutan. So use, take advantage of uh, an influencer marketing really works. I, I suppose you know, for instance, uh, recently I was launching a skincare product on Aja Pasa and the first thing I did is I will not talk to, I will not go talk to an actor or an actresses or, or an actress just because she has followers. I wanted to go talk to somebody who is a specialist or who really is passionate about skincare and there were there are few few Bhutanese who are passionate about skincare and they do blogging they do vlogging I rather work with them because people will listen to what they recommend and not what the actor or the actress is trying to sell just because they, they want to make some money out of it so you you have to be careful so again it's about choosing whom to work with just like you have to choose your your target uh, uh, platform social media platform Wherever opportunity is, always take advantage of it. Please shop from Ajabasa. Thank you very much. Sir.